Every morning, Godars Malai opens dozens of envelopes containing ticks mailed by bite victims. Malai is an entomologist on the lookout for longhorn ticks, an invasive species that, unlike other ticks, can reproduce itself through cloning. The tick is present in at least 21 states and is rapidly spreading across the eastern U.S. Here is a female longhorn tick. As you can see, the body is reddish. Around. Scientists at Molai's lab at the Connecticut Agricultural Experiment Station have identified an emerging bacteria in the longhorn tick for the first time. The pathogen can lead to ehrlichiosis, a tick-borne disease that causes symptoms such as fever, severe headaches, rash, and potentially death. Climate change, which is creating warmer and wetter conditions around the globe, is influencing how longhorn ticks transmit ehrlichiosis in places like Connecticut. Because of climate change, we are having shorter winter months, and as a result, this tick doesn't need to do that much dormancy. It is active all, almost all year round, except for a few months. So that means you're more likely to get bit if you're bit, it's more likely to feed, and if it feeds, it's more likely to reproduce. Correct. From 2008 to 2018, Connecticut saw just two cases of ehrlichiosis. Now that number has jumped to almost 30. Nationwide, ehrlichiosis cases have increased 15-fold since 2001. Malai tests the ticks for ehrlichiosis by grinding them down and then extracting their DNA. That DNA sample is amplified and sequenced to find genetic material from Ehrlichia chaffiensis, one of the bacteria that causes the disease. So you see the first hit is Ehrlichia chaffiensis. Jennifer Platt, a public health expert studying tick-borne diseases, contracted Ehrlichiosis in 2011. I felt like death. I felt horrible, like severe weakness, malaise, no energy. As cases rise in Connecticut, health officials last month shut down a Bridgeport beach for the rest of the season due to an influx of longhorn ticks and other tick species. How big is the risk for Connecticut residents and even beyond Connecticut borders? The reality is right now we don't really know because this is a new tick that has come into our community. But we do know that risk from tick-borne diseases in general is something that we have to be aware of in Connecticut at all times. Dr. John Torres joins me now. Dr. John, how soon could these symptoms actually arise? Good afternoon, Morgan. And these things can actually start one to two weeks after the tick bite. And they usually start off with mild symptoms, flu-like symptoms, fevers, muscle aches, kind of under the weather. But then they can pro progress to confusion and even a rash that children can get. One in three typically get this. It's a red splotchy rash. And then it can progress to more severe symptoms if not treated, Morgan. And, and I mean, when we talk about the fact that, you know, we're all looking for ways to protect ourselves. But my question is, is bug repellent enough to protect us from this? You know, bug repellent is certainly a good start, and it's one of the linchpins to try and protect yourself. But staying off of grassy areas, making sure you stay on the trails, wearing long, sleeve pant long sleeves and pants can help as well. And then the most important thing is tick checks. Every time you're outside, when you come back in, you, your children, and your pets, you need to check for ticks. And so if you do get bitten, I mean, what sort of is the first step? What's the first thing you should do? So the very first thing you should do if you're bitten is take the tick off. You want to identify the tick. There's various ways you can do that. You can go online and Google how to identify it. And once you identify it, you'll know what it is possibly transmitting to you. You can go to your doctor and say, do I need to be treated for this? All of it depends on how long that tick's attached. For ehrlichiosis, we're talking around 24 hours of attachment to transmit it. So less than that, the sooner you get it off, the better, Morgan. I remember in Carolina, we were no uh, strangers to ticks. I remember we used to take them off with tweezers, and then the common knowledge it was you either flushed it or, or you had to burn it. Uh, do you still take them off with tweezers, or can you take them off with your hand? No, you definitely take them off with tweezers, but you want to get down close to the skin and pull out gently. And then you do want to identify, you can take a picture of it before you dispose of it. And that way you can identify the tick and figure out what kind of diseases it might carry. Okay. All right. Dr. John Torres giving us the, the new information, not just my Carolina hearsay. Appreciate it. Take care. We thank you for watching. And remember, stay updated on breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or watch live on our YouTube channel.